discipline. Learn. And we, you know, those things, you know, they try to say something is wrong with everything now in church. The cynical saints. That we're going to talk about cynical again today. But the cynical saints, and so they want to throw everything out. But some of this stuff, there's a rich heritage associated with it. Amen. Some of the traditional things in the church were valuable. And growing up, us going to Sunday school, YPWW, learning memory verses and all those things, those things have helped me even now. So you don't want to just say, ah, well, that church, they was teaching the wrong thing. Well, you know, they didn't know everything you know because they didn't have the internet. But they loved Jesus. So they laid a foundation for you to know what you know. And everything on the internet is not truth anyway. Matter of fact, the internet can get very dangerous. You can play Russian root, spiritual Russian roulette with the internet. You get a hold to the wrong message, it'll change your life and ruin your family. So that's what the pastor's job is for, to rightly divide it and to help you stay on the right path. You can't do it by yourself. You need help. Look at somebody and say, you can't do it by yourself. All these old self-taught, self prophet, self-called, self, all this self. But you have no guidance, you have no authority, you're not submitted under anybody. You don't know what you're doing. Folks follow them because they have an internet presence and they don't understand, man, they need to be governed by somebody. They mad at their own father. They won't listen to their own daddy. They on the internet trying to make a family because they hate their real family. Can I tell the truth in here? And they're trying to mess your family up because their family's messed up. Yeah, and so some of this stuff, man, we don't throw everything out. Some of this stuff was valuable. Some of this stuff helped us. Hey, man, the choir and all that. Now, I know that churches with the choir ain't nothing but Pop-Tarts and Skittles on the stage. Now, we know that. They love that. But if the pastor get a backbone and stand up to his wife, he can keep the homosexuals out the choir. They up there dressed like her. Yeah, keep the musicians out of the club and keep them out of the, 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 the choir members. Oh, can I preach in here? Yeah, all somebody got to do is stand up and say something. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They gonna try to destroy you and all that. They don't, people don't like that kind of order. But that's God's order. Amen. Look at somebody say, somebody gotta be in charge. Amen. Somebody gotta be in charge of the church, of your home, somebody gotta be in charge. On your job, somebody's in charge. You ain't walked in there and tried to take over. But they come to church, oh, well, the Lord told me something different, then you need to go in a different building. I mean, it just makes no sense to me. Amen. But this lack of order is what's destroying everything. So, man, we're going to have fun. We're going to have a choir. We're going to do different things. We're going to stay in the Word. We're going to love the Lord. And man, we're just going to keep this a great environment. Amen. In ABC, a great environment. Y'all enjoy coming here, though. It feels good to be here. It's great to be here. I can't wait to get here. I'm telling you, me and my wife got off a plane yesterday and came straight here. We want to be here. It's a couple of nights out, we want to be here. I want to see who was here, want to hug the little kids, play with the kids, all of that. We're not faking. You think we faking that? No, we was doing that in the old building. Matter of fact, we were doing that in our house when we first started. And that's our heart, man. But let somebody love you. You know, the wine used to have a song, You Just Don't Want to Be Loved. Y'all remember that song? You turn your head away after hearing what I say. If you refuse to take my hand, then I'll understand you just don't want to be loved. Yeah, some folk just don't want to be loved. But you can't stay here if you don't want to be loved because we're going to love you. We're going to love you in here and we're going to love you right out of here if you don't want to be here. But we're going to love you. Amen. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash cynical saints to silent answers. Silent answers. Y'all enjoy the cynical saints message? 
Amen. Did that remind you of somebody? You know, I used to hate testimony service sometimes. That's why we don't have it. That's Russian roulette. That's spinning the wheel. That's, that's that wheel with bankrupt on it. The wheel of fortune. <laughs> the bankrupt. Yeah, but some folks would get up and just, you know, it would be so depressing. Saints, yeah. You know it's coming. Pray for my husband. He in jail again. Pray for me and my body. I'm sick in my body. My back hurt in my leg. I barely made it up here. Y'all pray for me. That I go on and see what the end is going to be. <laughs> Sound like it's the end now. You don't have nothing good going on. Your daughter doing okay? Oh, you know she. Pregnant out of wedlock again. What about your son? Oh, he's trapped in a liquor store. He broke in and can't get out. He can't get out. Do we want to get out? Nothing good. You don't have nothing good. And the first they started off God is good, saints, all the time. And all the time, God is good. And let me tell you all the bad stuff. <laughs> oh, man, don't get up testifying to that. Everybody got something that, that's wrong. But we don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on the good. Got bad stuff happening in our families and cousins and relatives and folk crazy and all that. We don't want to talk about that all the time. Let's talk about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. Yes. You know what I learned? When somebody get up, when, when, not get up, but when they come to you with a bunch of foolishness that's just depressing and down and stuff, do you know if you don't say nothing, they'll change what they say. Yeah. They come to you, brother. Oh, you know, I heard that Junior was acting up again and all of that. And you just stand there and be like, but you know, God is good, though. <laughs> yeah, he is. Now, that's what I come in. Yes. Just don't agree with the cynicism. Give him a silent answer. Amen. All right, let's dig into this. Hey, man, we're going to deal with this. See, we deal with stuff that's really happening with people. Amen. That can really make you better. That's the kind of church this is. Amen. You can go to the church that preach over everything. They talk about Jonah and the whale every week. Ain't nobody even, ain't nobody got fish as pets but all they talk about is Jonah and the whale every week can you apply that to my situation nothing wrong with the story it's a great story there's me in that story but every now and then you need to touch on what the folks are doing what they need to stop doing and what we all need to be doing that's church amen we can read the Bible for ourselves which is good but when we come here, we need the right application of the word. So we can change this foolish behavior, stop all this dysfunction and all these issues. Aren't you tired of seeing issues getting you, then your children, then your children's children? Somebody need to stand up and stop that spirit. Cancel that thing. That's got to stop. Another homosexual ain't being born in our family. Another lesbian ain't being born in this family. Another divorce is not going to happen in this family. Amen. Another man is not going to walk away from his responsibility of this family. Amen. No more way with daughters in this family. No more way with sons in this family. No more sickness and disease in this family. No more mental illness in this family. I'm here to change things. I'm here to change things. I don't know what you came to do. I'm here to change things in my own family. Stuff that happened to me don't have to happen to my children. Yes. 
get up here talking about prosperity. Now, what good is money and your family's crazy? What good is money and you full of demons? What good is prosperity? That's not prosperity. The wicked have money. Can't stay married, but you got money. All right. Yeah, there he is. That's him. That's him. Creeping. Like my daddy used to say, ducking and dodging and peeping and hiding. Creeping. The devil is the master cynic, and he has imparted this spirit into our world. He wants you to be cynical. So you can carry doubt alongside your confession. Did you hear that? Yeah. If you're cynical, you carry doubt along with your confession. So you're confessing that Jesus is the Christ, but you carry doubt when it comes to the things that he can do for you. <laughs> yeah, that's what the church turned into during the pandemic. They was confessing Jesus was Christ, but scared of something that they were told was in there. So you have fear, but con confessing Christ with fear? Yeah, they were hybrid Christians. Yeah, they carried the Bible. They read the Bible. But they didn't believe the Bible. Cynicism. Cynics. You believe the news over the word? You're a cynic. Now that we done come through it, and now what you got to say? They called me the pastor of COVID. Remember that? They had a whole website. Man, I got more websites and channels dedicated to me. Boy, I'm famous. They had a whole, the pastor of COVID. He the COVID pastor. Just bringing everybody in there and exposing them to COVID. That ain't what everybody was getting exposed to. Everybody was getting exposed to the truth. And that's why wasn't nobody in here scared of COVID. Wasn't nobody in here worried about dying of no Was anybody worried? So look at him in there. No social distance. No man. He crazy. Everybody gonna drop dead. Oh, he crazy. Anybody drop dead? Not one. And at that time, we about 450 deep. Rose up to about 600 during the pandemic. Knocked the wall out. We brought more infections in here. We made room for the pandemic. Yeah? Come on in here. Come on in here. The pandemic gonna get saved. That little COVID thing. What's that little round thing? It's gonna get saved. Ain't nobody in here scared of it. No, because God told us what it was. And told us what we needed to do. What we do? We stopped eating sugar, remember? Went on a sugar fast. Somebody like, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Oh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Sugar fast. Then we, you know, we, we did fast. We, we did everything God told us to do. And look at somebody said, we made it through. Made it, made it through without fear. So we're not carrying doubt with our confession. We confess, we confess that Jesus is the Christ and we believe that same Jesus is a healer. Yeah. So I'm not worried about what they're talking about when I know the healer. Yeah. Then I know the one that holds my life in his hands. Yeah. That means I don't time out until he times me out. Yeah. That's what we believe and we carry that with our confession. But cynical folks the devil wants you to be cynical so you can carry doubt with your confession. Yeah. That's why you up testifying of all the things that's wrong with you. You've given yourself over to those wrong things. This keeps him in the forefront of your mind and embedded in your life. When you carry doubt, he's in the forefront of your mind. So when God is getting ready to do something, the first thing that pops in your mind is doubt. James 1 and 7. For let no man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. 
if he's a man that wavers, yeah. if he's a man that doubts. Yeah. He won't receive anything. Now, how you save and you can't receive anything from the Lord? I don't think you save. Wow. You ain't in good standing. He brings things into question to break your focus and belief. Oh, boy, this is the big one. I mean, folk I know been saved for a long time, Herman. Pastor in churches, bishop in whole territories and areas. And they get one little email that say the Bible is false because of this. And they forward it to me. What you think about this? Hey, hey, G. Craig, what you think about this? I don't think nothing. I haven't seen it. Why won't you watch it? For I ain't watching it. You know why I'm not watching it? Because I don't have to. Why would I watch that? I know the Bible's true. I don't need your 16 bean recipe to make soup. I have one. I already know how to make soup. I know how to make it great. So I don't need your recipe. If you send me your recipe, I'm not watching. I'm not reading it. I have no need of that. Because I know how to make the soup. You see what I'm saying? So I don't have no need to read nothing about why the Bible is false when I know the Bible is true. Why would I watch that? Oh, but you need to see it, because then it's just some stuff. It's some stuff. What are you talking about? Don't you understand folks just want likes and views? Don't you know the internet's not real, brother? Some folk believe the internet over real humans. So the devil just dropped little things. He bring things into question to break your focus and your belief. You were doing good. And then he brought something into question. He wants to unsettle you and make everything debatable and questionable. <laughs> everything can't be debatable. So we supposed to just sit under you and believe what you say? That'll be a, it, it would really be good if you did that as a member of a church. Like, it, that would be great. <laughs> you got a Bible, right? You can check it. You can check it. I don't teach nothing outside of the Bible. Brother, but the way you teach it, all them jokes, all you do is tell jokes. All I do is tell jokes. Well, I have fun preaching. Get out, turn me off, and find somebody boring. Go listen to Joel. He ain't going to ever tell a joke. I'd rather tell a joke than be a joke. Amen. Yeah, man, I'm a time up. Oh, you know how long? See, I've been doing this for a long time. You think I'm going to change because you had a problem with me? Why do you come to a church and you got a problem? Man, that's a waste of a Sunday. Go fishing. But he wants to settle you and make everything debatable and questionable. So when you come into church, you have a debatable questioning spirit. You can't be taught. You can't be taught because of your debatable, cantankerous, cynical behind. Can't be taught. I preached in Detroit, and we had powerful move of God off the call, all that. Everybody, you know, we just preaching on doing the rewind, and you know, I wasn't sticking to the script. There was a whole bunch of other stuff I had to say. We were just doing it, man, whatever. After it was over, you know, I'm there, and I had my, uh, uh, the guys with me, I had my little B, the B team, security team. They, they took care of business, Breon and Gerard, they was there, so, you know. <laughs> Breon can look intimidating, even though he is a teddy bear. But he can look. That's all I need is to look. Y'all do nothing but just look. Look the part. Do 
dude came up to me after the after after the message. Up to me, he was like, "Hey, Pastor, how you doing? I I, I just want to meet you." I said, "Okay." And then he said, uh, "You know when you had said that? And, you know when that comes? You know when you had said that uh, that about Allah? You talk about Allah, but you know Jesus called God Allah." I said, "No, he didn't." So I'm just going like, "Yes, he did. He called him Allah in the Word." I said, "No, he didn't." And I'm gonna walk up and he said, yes he did. And you know, Breon looking like, what more yes he did? <laughs> and you gonna be calling for Allah. <laughs> I mean, after the whole message, the altar prayer and everything. And see, because of that cynical spirit in him, that's all he heard. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I had the answers yeah. that would have changed his life forever. I got up and preached the very thing he needed. But the devil implanted cynicism in him. And once I said that, he held that in his mind. As a matter of fact, during the sermon, he got up and left. So he wouldn't hear anything else that could help him. Just so he could come back and say that. Yeah, that's how folks are. Yeah. Yeah, God told me, he said, you know, most of the folks that are mad at you need you. That's the Lord spoke. He said, they need you. They need what you preach. They need the gospel you preach. What you're preaching could change their lives and fix their issues. But they have to stay mad on purpose to keep the truth out. To keep what you have from getting in them they have to be mad and angry and combative. <laughs> yeah. But he brings things into question to break your focus. He wants to unsettle you and make everything debatable and questionable. Genesis 3 and 1, that's what he did in the garden. Now the serpent, the Bible says, was more subtle. That's subtle. That's a picture of subtle right there. He's more subtle. Than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, he just came up to her with a question to plant a seed of doubt and cynicism. He said, Hath God said, first of all, why are you talking about God? Like your first words to the first humans is not even about you. The first thing you saying. Is shade? This first thing he's saying to a human. He said unto the woman, Hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Cynicism. Then he wants her to repeat what the Lord said so he can say, That's not going to happen. Everything is not questionable. Everything is not debatable. Yeah. What God said is not debatable. Yeah. That's what Adam should have said. Look here, Snake. This is not up for debate. As believers, there are some things we should never. Look at somebody and say never. never. And then look the other way and say never. never. There are some things we should never argue or debate. Because it only leads to senseless questioning and arguments to cause doubt and fear. Yeah. Amen. Second Timothy 2 and 24. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. Yeah. You can't be quarrelsome. Yeah. You know, folks that are quarrelsome aren't the Lord's servants. A quarrelsome person isn't confident in what they know. That's why I'm not quarrelsome. Man, I ain't arguing with nobody. Brother, I'm going to let you make it. You, you be good with that. Folks are mad at me right now because I won't argue. Say something. Respond. Say something. I ain't. Yeah, I'm not because I'm not quarrelsome. I'm not arguing. I don't have to argue. I know what my orders are. I know what I'm supposed to say. Yeah. So you can't be quarrelsome. 
Amen. Get that spirit out of you. If you like quarrels and arguments, get that spirit out of you. That's not God. Jesus didn't go around arguing. The Lord's servant can't be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone. Two things you can't be at one time, quarrelsome and kind. <laughs> They're the opposite of each other. You can't be quarrelsome and kind. Somebody come to me and they don't agree with something. Okay, brother, well, you, you know, that's good. I don't, oh, but see what you need to do is, see, you want to do it yourself. I wouldn't want to be in a house with nobody like that. Damn. But you got to be kind to how many people? Everyone. What about the folks you don't like? Everyone. What about the folks you mad at? Everyone. What about the folks you don't agree with? Everyone. You got to be kind to everyone. Yeah. yeah, and my kindness to you when you call some is, I'm not going to talk to you. I just leave you alone. I speak to you. How you doing, brother? Just leave you alone. No, brother, we got to talk about no. God bless you. You got to be kind to everyone, and then you got to be able to teach. You have to be able to be taught. Of course, a person can't be taught because you won't shut up. And you think you know. That's why you're arguing and quarrelsome. Patiently enduring evil. Uh oh. Can you patiently endure evil? When folks talking about you, can you be patient and just endure it? Folks messing with you, can you be patient and just endure it? Huh? Amen. You remember this church, so you see how I handle stuff. Can you do that? That's how I have to handle it. I got to be patiently. I got to patiently endure it. Don't check nobody. Ain't calling nobody. Ain't going looking for nobody. I ain't going to do none of that. I'm going to patiently what? Endure it. Can you do that? <laughs> Somebody like, depends on what. Depends on what day it is, Pastor. <laughs> so, no, nah, man. No, no. If you're gonna be a say, if I'm gonna be a servant of the Lord, I gotta do what the Bible says. I don't wanna be no fake servant of the Lord. I really would do. God, this is my life. I want to do this like for real. So I want to line up with all of this. So I can't be quarrelsome. I'm not arguing with anybody. And then I'm gonna be kind to everyone. Then I'm able to teach. Because I want to learn. Because if I can't learn, I can't teach. I don't want nobody in my life that can't teach me. So I got to be able to be taught. And then I got to patiently endure evil. That's the one somebody got a hex on. Oh, the rest of the test, how many of them is it for? If I miss one, what's my score? Evelyn, what's the score? 25 off, that's a 75. 75, that's passing. 75 off, that's passing. I'm going to make it in if I leave that last one off. Amen. Because I got to get down with the get down sometimes. I got to put these hands on somebody sometimes. You get to talking about the wrong stuff. But you got to patiently endure evil. Somebody like, go to the next slide, pastor. No. No. You don't come out yourself. You don't see your pastor doing that. Amen. You don't see me online arguing with nobody. I will not do it. I'm not going to do it. I won't use God's platform for that. So you don't do it either. Look at somebody and say, patiently endure evil. You don't patiently endure evil, you become evil. You got to become evil to fight evil. The spirit behind a cynic is unsettled with a continuously apprehensive demeanor. 
When you're a cynic, you have an, a continuously apprehensive demeanor, meaning that you don't make moves confidently. Not only do you bring everything into question, you question what you're doing. It's okay to be as the Bereans in your approach. Folks got this word all wrong. You're not sitting in here in ABC and you're a Berean. First of all, you ain't from Berea. That's what it means. And because you got a pencil and some paper and trying to check everything I'm saying, that don't make you Berean. That makes you distracted. Yeah, you got to listen, pay attention. But it's okay to be Berean in your approach, which is to say, like the Bereans, you receive what you hear and then read the scriptures for yourself. That's all it was. That's all it was. It wasn't they were listening to Paul like, wait a minute, what? What? I don't know. Let, let's go check. They were, that's not it. Ooh, that ain't listen to the scripture. Acts 17 and 11. Now, these Jews, speaking of the Bereans, the ones from Berea, were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Because the ones in Thessalonica wasn't really paying attention like they should have been. But the ones from Berea, the Bible says they received the word with all eagerness. Like, wait, they received it with what? So is all eagerness skepticism? Is that being a skeptic, a cynic? Am I trying to poke holes in what Paul is saying? No, the Bible said they were eager. And then examining the scripture daily to see if these things were so. So they read the scripture to find the source of what he was preaching. But they weren't sitting in there, let's get him. Let's poke holes in what he's saying. Let's find the flaws. No, they were eager to hear and receive the truth. They just wanted more than Thessalonica. We don't just want the truth, but we want to find truth for ourselves as well. Amen. Folk got this all wrong. I'm a Berean, brother. I'm a Berean, so I'm going to be sitting in the back with my pen and paper and everything you say. I'm going to be looking it up. and I, Then you're not going to be paying attention. Ooh, people. And you know what would fix that? A good old-fashioned conversation with your father. Because you treat him like that. Your mama taught you to check everything he said. That's where that spirit comes from. So you see me as an authority. And want to poke holes in what I'm preaching because holes was poked in the way you was raised. <laughs> but the spirit behind a cynic is just unsettled, always apprehensive. Mm. However, always questioning the validity of the word will lead to cynicism and apprehension in God's processes. Everyone has a process that God is taking them through. So you got to understand when you're dealing with the alpha and omega and the beginning and the end, God saw your end when he saw your beginning. So when you got saved and accepted him into your life, he knew that he had to get you from point A to point B. He already knows what B is going to look like. You're not going to surprise the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. So yeah, you went off course, you went through the back way, you went through the alley, you was boots and an overcoat. All of those things happened. But his objective is still to get you to be. He said, once I start this, I'm going to complete this. But when you become a cynic, you begin to question God's process for you. You know why the cynic questions God's process? Because they're busy looking at everybody else's process. They're busy examining your process. Where you went wrong. What you did wrong. Something should never be questioned or debated. 
Romans 1 and 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, and it is written, the just shall not live by cynicism, not by doubt, not by fear, but by faith. Faith that he's going to get me from A to B. Amen. We must not allow the devil to plant the seed of doubt in us by making us question things that are not important. Ooh, I'm not spending time questioning stuff. Amen. I'm not arguing with you about something that ain't, that ain't important. That's right. Our faith must carry us through this, defe- this deceptive time. Our faith must carry us through this deceptive time. It's a, y'all know it's a deceptive time? Yeah. So our faith has to carry us through. We must declare that there are certain things that are not up for discussion in order to avoid the doubt and unbelief of cynical saints. That's not up for discussion. I'm not discussing that. Titus 3 and 9. But avoid foolish questions. What do you do with foolish questions? You avoid them. Don't ask me nothing foolish, brother. Jesus called God a holler. Brother, that's foolish. First of all, where were they? When did that happen? Brother, shut up. It's foolish. Jesus, I mean, ooh, that's stupid. So he said, avoid it. And that's what I did. I said, no, he didn't. I'm avoiding it. Now he wanted a whole conversation so he can pull out the book he reads and show me where what he's saying is true. I don't read that book, but I read the Bible. Why you come, why you come to a church where we talking about the Bible and you got another book in your pocket? But avoid foolish questions. What do you do with foolish questions? What? And genealogies. Avoid genealogies. Quit going to ancestry.com and trying to find out if you can to Ogden. Brother, that ain't gonna change your pay. That's not gonna change your check. I just found out I'm a descendant of Tutankhamun. King Tut, he's my great, 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 grandfather's friend. Give me some money. Give me some money. If you a king, you should have some money. Avoid it. We the lost tribe of Israel. We the lost ones. We yes, you are. You the lost tribe of Johnsons. Brother. Can we do something about that? Find little Rufus. Where is he? He really lost. Brother, trying to be elite. Bible said, avoid foolish questions, avoid genealogies, discussions of where you came from, discussions of whether or not you the chosen ones. Amen. Man, you go all the way back. You know what you're gonna find? Slavery. No matter what color you are. You white, you go all the way back, you're going to find slavery. Black folks had white folks enslaved. Keep going back, you're going to find slavery. Islam had Christians enslaved. Keep going back, you're going to find slavery. Everybody's been enslaved. Shut up! Man, I don't need you. You watched a 20-minute video, brother. 20 minutes. At the end of it, your beard was touching the ground. How do you do that, man? 
my God, is Jesus gonna come back? And oh, no, you can't go. You got a Jerry girl. <laughs> oh, you got a perm. You can't, you, you can't come. You can't enter in the kingdom with a perm. You fried your hair. You can't come. Ooh, he said avoid it. He said avoid it. Look at somebody say avoid it. Avoid it. And contentions. You know what contentions are? When somebody got beef with somebody else. Avoid that. Avoid other folks beef. Amen. Other folks beef. Brother, I'm not going to get mad with you because you mad at somebody. And I'm not going to stop liking somebody because you don't like them no more. Brother, I got my own mind. I make my own decisions. You get that phone call, brother. We leaving that church. You coming? No, I ain't coming. Did I come with you? Brother, leave. Leave me alone. Quit calling me. That's stupid. He said, avoid that. The Bible said, avoid that. That's a contention. And strivings about the law. What day, what day is the Sabbath? It don't matter. I have it whenever I want to. Man, I'm feeling Sabbathy right now. Or well, people just don't real man. Come on, you don't know what that means. Jesus said He fulfilled the Sabbath. He fulfilled it, paid it, paid it for. I'm not knocking folks that want to celebrate it. That's your prerogative. But don't demonize me because I don't do it the day you do it. Yes. Brother, oh, it was a good message. Great message. Great. Oh, oh, it was great. One problem. It was on a Sunday. If you could just move it a few hours back to Saturday, it would just be. It'll be what? Am I going to hell because I preached on a Sunday? Well. <laughs> See, it ain't a heaven and hell. Then shut up! I'm going to avoid it. He said, because they are unprofitable and what? Vain. Vain. That's a person lifted up in themselves that argue about these things. All they're really doing is avoiding the dumb decisions they've made in their personal life. You go to, when people go to arguing all of this stuff ask them about their family life where are your kids right. yes, sir. where's your wife yes, sir. not this one where's the other one oh, and the one before that oh, where are the children where, where, why your kids hate you bro yeah. what is that yeah that's all this is because it's vanity yeah. the bible uses vain we have a new word for it now it's called narcissistic yeah. person that believes they're right when they're wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Look at somebody say, not up for discussion. Uh-huh. Here are some things I hope, ooh, I hope you can join in with me. Uh-huh. But here are some things that are just not up for I'm not discussing this. Amen. If you in here, don't ask me about them. Don't ask me about none of what I'm about to put on this screen. Don't ask me about it. I'm not, it's not up for discussion. Some things have to be off limits. Right, Montel? They got to be off limits. Just talk. Man, it's a lot of people in this church. (laughs) Good grace. I ain't never made it back this far. But it it can't be up for discussion. Thank you, Keenan. Keenan, look at his arms. He's just getting muscular. (laughs) Carrying that kind. Yeah, it just, no, 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 no. I see where you're going, brother. No. Not up for discussion. The first thing, the validity of the Bible. Not up for discussion. Don't send me no video about somebody breaking down all the flaws in the Bible. The Bible's valid to me, bro. It's not up for discussion. I'm not watching that. I don't want to hear that. Not up for discussion. I'm not discussing the Bible with you. No, brother. No, no, no. Ain't no flaws in my Bible. I believe all of it. I live by it and it's blessing me. Brother, how is your Bible working for you? How is the stuff you know working for you? It's funny how I believe the validity of the Bible. You believe the Bible is the white man's book and your life is trash. And mine is not. So brother, I'm going to stick with this book. Just like it's written. 
just like it was given to me. I live by it, so we're not debating the validity of the Bible. The proof of its validity is our faith. That's why you can't debate it. You can't tell me, you can't talk against the book I have faith in. My faith validates it because I choose to believe it. Just like you choose to believe that it was the white man that wrote it. Why would the white man write a book full of God's morality? (laughs) And why you got a problem with this that the white man did, but you don't have a problem watching the white man's movies? (laughs) Going to the white man's schools? Working for the white man? Getting that white check? Getting that check from White World, brother. That's where your check came from. I don't understand. You got a problem with the Bible, but nothing else the white man does. You took your whole family to see a movie. You was at the white man's football game. You think that's a black man's game? You're sadly mistaken. You, you t- You driving the car that they made. I last I checked, ain't no new line of cars coming from Africa. Last time I checked, I ain't seen them. You see the African? I ain't seen. I ain't seen the African car. Maybe they got some electrical electric ones coming out or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't wearing African clothes either, brother. Shopping in the white man's store. But got a problem. Everything else is okay in white world. Except the Bible. The Bible is, this is where we have to draw the line. (laughs) Man, people are so crazy and delirious and you be entertaining it. This is the message that came to you that God has sent to you to make you stop entertaining. It's just time to draw the line and say, brother, you're crazy. Here's the line. Keep crazy over there. Amen. Because the proof of it, its validity is our faith. We live by it, see it, demonstrate it, and experience it. The living word is a lie. And our lives are a testament of it. Only the cynic looks for flaws or denies its infallibility. And that's the devil. Only a cynical person is looking for something wrong with the Bible. Hebrews describes the Bible, said, for the word of God is quick and powerful. That's what you're mad at. It was quick. Quick to show you how stupid you was. Quick to show you how dumb you been. Quick to show you you're just stupid. It was quick to convict you. And quick to try to change your crazy self. That's what you're mad at. Then it's powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing of sunder. Of what? Soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts. And it, that's, the, that's what they can't deal with. <laughs> that word is, an, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So I'm going to believe what the words say. You keep talking to the ancestors. Why are you talking to the oppressed ancestors? All of them was oppressed. Well, I talked to the Egyptians. Oh, you talked to the ones that God cursed. Oh, yes. Let's see how that's going to work out for you. It ain't funny how somebody be, they look normal and then once they get into the ancestor talk, now you got your teeth grilled up, now your breath smells like Satan. And tatted your arm and your neck and your face and your head. Ah, I'm just all natural. You all natural stink. You smell. You smell. <laughs> Why you let the ancestors do you like that? See, <laughs> you need to quit talking to them. <laughs> Ain't had the odor back in that day. So everybody was used to the smell. 
We have deodorant now. You need to stay at the ancestor stuff. Come on up. Come on up to this time. Do something about that funk. But you stink. Yeah. Man, they crazy. I don't want that. I don't want with your ancestors. I don't want none of that. Brother, you're just disrespecting the answer. They don't know. Well, you know how long they've been dead. I mean, I knew my father very well and loved him, but I don't be talking to him now. I don't be talking to my daddy now. I'm going to take what he taught me and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. You in there, you know, you can't even afford the bowls and stuff. You got pots just hitting them. <laughs> See, this is the sacred skillet. <laughs> you got a spatula in the skillet. <laughs> See, the bowls cost too much, so I gotta use what I can. Uh, yes, I need a nap. Where am I? Yeah, we ain't discussing it. Okay. Powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Oh, did I read this? Oh, the thoughts and intents of the heart. All right! Let me regroup. <laughs> that was funny. But they do. They have them old sounds and tones. I got a video of Erica Badu going through her house. Oh. Erica Badu. Oh. Going through her house. She got cymbals on her feet. Oh. Tambourines on her thighs. And she just walked through the house. <laughs> See, these are the sounds of the girl. You crazy? Nobody want to live with you. You too noisy. Nobody want to hear that all the time. Trying to read, girl. Will you be still? <laughs> Get somewhere and sit down. <laughs> Making me nervous. <laughs> Making me nervous. All these bells. <laughs> yeah, and all them old bowls, and this is the tone of the underworld. You hit this, and heads pop up from under the bed. Uh, dude, she says, "You crazy? Your daddy was a pastor. You done went past hell to get a bowl. Hell ain't got the one I need." <laughs> Let me hear this message. But I'm not, I'm not questioning the validity of the Bible. So don't be asking me about it. Amen. Amen. And don't you ask nobody in here about it. Right. Not nobody that's right in here. Right. You know the ones. Second thing I'm not entertaining questions about, the name of Jesus. Amen. Brother, I'm too old to change the name. I'm not stumbling up on a video and all of a sudden all the thousands of demons I've cast out in Jesus name all that comes into question over a 10 minute video because you call him something else and I've been calling him the wrong thing brother what I've been calling him he's responded to what I've been calling he's moved to he's done what I ask and requested when I call his name so I call his name boldly Jesus and he know I'm talking to him. He knows exactly what I mean. He knows exactly what I need. Ten minute video. Oh, see, they took his name. It used to mean Zeus and it meant this and that. Ten minute. Brother, you watch that? Ten minute video? Well, I got 
53 years of experience. How about that? In calling the name of Jesus. They took me to the hospital. My appendix was about to burst. And they told me I couldn't even move. I remember laying on the bed, playing with toys. I couldn't move because they said if I got active, it would burst. My daddy came in there, laid his hands on me, and said, in the name of Jesus, let this infirmity be healed. And I've been loud and hollering and moving ever since with my appendix. I'm pointing right here. I don't know where it is, but wherever it is, <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> Long as it's there, I don't need to see it. I don't need to see it. Yeah. Tonsil swole up so bad I couldn't talk. Came home from school, had to miss school. I'm in the bed, couldn't talk, neck swollen. They took me to the hospital. They said, yeah, his, his tonsils are terrible. We're going to have to take his tonsils out. You know, my daddy, how much that going to cost? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there's a better way. Oh, there's a better way. <laughs> now nah, that didn't happen. But he did. He did. My daddy said, no, 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 we ain't taking this toss out. My daddy said, I don't believe in you just taking stuff out, my boy. He might need this later. So they brought me home, took me to church, stood me up in front of the, the saints. They all stood up in Vernon, Texas, gathered around me, pointed at me, and began to pray for my throat in the name of Jesus. My throat miraculously went back to normal. I still have my tonsils. In the name of Jesus, did nobody in there say Yahshua and Yahshua? None of that. They said Jesus' name. Jesus. Little baby Ellery back there, Rob and Ginger's baby. She called me and said, Our baby was born without a thyroid. I'd never heard of that. I didn't know that could happen. A baby born without a thyroid. Brought the baby in. Ginger had just had the baby. She came up to prayer. Brought him in the office with the elders. We prayed and laid hands on them and the baby. God grew a thyroid in that baby's neck. We felt electricity in that room. We felt the power of God in that room. God came in that room because we called on the name that's above every name. Jesus name Jesus name Because there's power in the name of Jesus there's salvation in the name of Jesus see see look that's why they're trying to take away the traditional things of church. Because they don't like them songs. Because them songs stated what was true. There is power in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. All right, sit down. I ain't the... Hallelujah. Come tell me I'm saying the wrong name. Brother, no, you're saying the wrong name. Because I got proof of what I've been talking about. Proof of what I've been talking about. In Africa, praying for a dude. Looked down on the ground and his feet were in the air. This brother started levitating while I'm praying for him. And I looked at him, I was like, oh no, this ain't happening today. I said, in the name of Jesus, brother, come on back down. And he just came on back down. He respected that name. Because he knew there was power in that name. Brother, you ain't coming in acting up. Demons ain't putting on no show when the power of God is here. When the name of Jesus is here, demons got to flee. Brother, we will cast your demon out of you. You stepped in the wrong place. How many demons?
demons you cast out with that name you use it. None. Well, brother, I've been all over this world. And cast demons out under the name of the uh, uh, under the name of Jesus, and every one of them respected me, knew exactly who I was, and knew exactly what I was saying. All right, all right. Can I tell you the truth in here? At the name of Jesus, demons tremble. The devil is afraid, and God's power and authority is released. We call His name in confidence. Call his name in confidence. Yes. It's not the semantics. It's not even about what you're saying audibly. Yeah. It's the frequencies. Yeah. <laughs> it's the frequencies that emit from our being that he is responding to. He's not going to trust your words. He's not going to trust what you say. That's lip service. He wants the frequencies. Because the frequencies are mixed with your intent. It's it sounds mixed with intent. That's what the frequency is. Yes. Just as a father hears the cry of his child, so does God understand our pleas to his son Jesus. Only the devil, only the devil, and you a devil too if you do this. Only the devil will attempt to take away the value, validity, and effectiveness of the name Jesus. Philippians 2 and 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things what? Under. under that's the one I like. Under the earth. Every demon knows him, who he is. Sons of Sceva, whatever, we cast you out in the name of them over there. Demon said, okay, Jesus we know. And Paul, you know why we know Paul? Because he uses the name of Jesus. We don't know you talking about it. Ah! <laughs> Philippians 2 and 10. That I, oh, I already read that. Oh, this is good stuff. Yeah. I'm not debating the salvation of others. Yeah. Don't come to me. I don't know if they say, I don't know what's going to happen with them. I don't know if they, what their B is going to look like. Yeah. That's not up for discussion. Because salvation is based on the heart, we cannot judge any man's heart or intention. So stop doing that. Stop doing that. No, you're not going to have no spiritual discernment and inclination where you know what's on somebody's heart. No, you don't have that. God don't give that to us. He doesn't give that to us. And aren't you glad? Because there was sometimes you had stuff on your heart, you glad they didn't discern that. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for, thank you for keeping my secret, God. Because... Amen. Ain't nobody reading thoughts. You ain't Professor X. You are just a spiritual mutant. You in here just, oh, ooh, I see that too. Oh, don't think that about me. You crazy. No, God don't do that. He don't give us people's intent. Pastor in this church, God don't let me see that. He don't want me to see that because he wants me to believe that you can be helped through what is being preached. I can't draw conclusions on folks and I can't draw lines over folks. I can't X folks out and say that's it. I'm not allowed to do that because God doesn't do that with me. Only God is the discerner of thoughts and knows the intentions of a person. So, we cannot judge the fate of others. But cynics want to believe that God will punish those that mistreat their race and not understanding the fact that all races have mistreated other races. Yeah. You crazy! We pray that all be saved. All be saved. Every color, every creed. Only the devil will make a race target another race and demonize them. Jesus died so that every man may be saved. Romans 2 and 3, and think if thou this, O man that judges them which do such things, and do it the same, that thou should escape the judgment of God, you're doing the same thing. Don't be, no, man, you know folks that heavily condemn folks are in sin themselves? Yes. 
I'm not discussing other folks' business either. Come on, ABC. We're just not going to sit around and be a bunch of gossips and tail bearers and tatter tales. We ain't going to have no messy church. Amen. Why would I discuss the personal business of others in a manner where God's forgiveness and grace cannot handle it? Think about what I just said. When you talking about people and condemning them, you're talking as if God's forgiveness and grace can't handle it. So what happened with you? Did he not do the same thing for me? Listen to this. This is me. I, I put my own statement on here. My, biz, my own business keeps me busy. And I don't have the energy to be a busybody. Amen. I can't be in your business because my business keeps me busy. I got a lot going on, brother. I don't have time for your business. Attacking people for their private issues is a death trap. Cynics always do this and end up having worse issues than the ones they are attacking. Only a devil will talk the business of others without knowing the full story. This is called bearing false witness. 1 Peter 4 and 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Don't suffer as a thief. Look how he's categorizing this. This is some bad stuff. Don't suffer as a murderer. Don't suffer as a thief. Don't suffer as an evildoer or as a what? Busybody in other men's matters. Okay, now what does this passage tell us? That there are consequences. Suffering. You're going to suffer as a busybody. Summary. I didn't say it last week, but I said it this week. Amen. Cynicism makes us assume the bad, believe the worst, and speak doom instead of believing in the power of God. It attracts people that are always talking against someone or busybodies that meddle in private affairs. It makes you comfortable being skeptical instead of being optimistic. Instead of speaking life, you speak death. Instead of seeing the good, you highlight the bad. Instead of having faith that it can be get better, you have fear that it can't. Being fearful is a sin. I just put that on Instagram this morning. That's revelations. It tells you the fearful are going to end up in hell. Named them with the whoremongers, named them with the idolaters, and said, and fearful. Yeah, that's all cynicism is. Being fearful is a sin, and those that are will have their place in the lake of fire along with whoremongers, idolaters, and unbelievers. This crazy, cynical disposition should not be in God's church. Amen. Amen. We must stop arguing and explaining our faith away to people. We have to stop wasting time trying to reason with unreasonable cynics. Those that love to argue, love to sow discord, and love to see you upset just won't company. They're lonely. And you're going to be lonely if you like this. They mess with you so you'll mess with them back and they got company. Let me get on here and argue with so-and-so today. That's all they got is people to argue with. Jive? You know how jive that is? Yeah, they just want company. We must deny the devil access to our faith and put him in his place. Where is his place? Look at somebody say, behind us. His place is the devil should never be in front of you. If he's in front of you, he's in control of you. Amen. Don't let the devil ride. Because if he ride, he's going to want to drive. And he has one destination. His GPS, he got one address he puts in it. 666. Yeah, so we got to put the devil behind us. Jesus did not argue with the devil on the mountain. 
and he did not have to prove who he was to him. He spoke the word that was already written and kept the devil behind him. We must keep the opinions and comments of cyn cynical saints behind us and only speak the word. This way, we do not allow any cynical seeds to be planted in our hearts or mind. Amen? We're not going to be a cynical church. We're not going to sit around here and act like that. Finally, Proverbs 26 and 4. Answer, not a fool, according to his folly. Don't let him pull you into his foolishness. Amen? That's what the scripture says. Don't you let a fool pull you into his foolishness. Because if he pull you into the foolishness, you're going to be like him. A fool. Two fools arguing. Two fools fighting. Brother, I ain't got time for your folly. I'm going to start using that word. Brother, get that folly out of here. I don't have time for your folly. Say, answer him not. Don't even. Ignore him. Give him a silent answer. Amen? Amen? Everyone stand to your feet. You may have grew up where you have to defend yourself all the time. Folks argued in your house all the time. All the walls was cracked from just yelling and screaming. That's what you saw growing up? Or maybe it's not that. Maybe you just adopted that. Where you just like to defend yourself and prove whether you're right or wrong. Well, that spirit needs to come off you. God needs to be the proof of your life, not you. God needs to be your defendant. I mean, your defender, not you. So I want to pray for you to get that spirit off where you don't have to defend yourself anymore. You can let stuff folks say just fall right off you. And you can give them silent answers. Still love them, still pray for them. But brother, I don't have time for that argument. I'm not talking about that anymore. If that's you, just come on up. And we're going to pray for you and believe God with you. That's it. I'm not, no, you're not pulling me into that. Every time you pull me into that, I get to cussing, cutting, and shooting, hating. That's the one. Hate. Devil's manipulating your emotions with that. And you getting upset, angry, and you want to say something. Defend yourself. Let somebody have a piece of your mind and this is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to do. And next time I see him, and if he say one more thing, if she do one more thing, oh, don't push me. She push me one more time. I'm going to have to, yes, unleash the kraken. I'm going to have to just unleash the beast. I'm going to unleash the beast. That's bad if a beast is in there. We finna get that out. Amen. Teenagers too. Amen. We ain't having beef and clicks. And this group and this group. It's the cute group. That's the nappy group. And that's, this ain't school days. Y'all better get along in here. So we're going to come against all this stuff. That's when it starts when you're young. When you're young and got your hurt did for the first time, man, you think something. You think something. Got your first haircut. No, we ain't doing that, man. We're going to let this stuff. We're going to get along. We're going to love each other. We're just going to let this stuff. I'm telling you, we're not going to be cynics. And we're not going to let beef agitate us and folks aggravate us. And, oh, I want to kill that Negro. <laughs> None of that. God, take all of that out, man. We want to, oh, man, we want to love folks. Amen. 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 And you know what? The more I love God, the more I fall in love with Jesus, the less stuff folks do bother me. Man. It just don't bother me. And you know that makes folks even more mad. But let them be mad because that don't have nothing to do with me. I'm over here loving Jesus. So all this innocent, everyone bow your heads, everyone that came up and we're going to believe God. Father God, help us in the area of our emotions and our attitudes, our feelings. God, we see people talking about us and they probably aren't even talking about us. We feel people saying our name and looking down on us and thinking this about us and that about us and father god we just constantly 
in an emotional tailspin because of what others have thought or said or done. Father, we need that to drop right now. Some of this stuff is, is messing our futures up. We can't even go forward in you because we're worried about what is being thought about us and said about us. Our image to others and their opinions and comments. We don't want to be governed by any of that. We only want to be governed by you. So lift your hands up, everyone. Father God, just cleanse us of that right now, God. Cleanse us of that ideology, that thought process that makes us worry about what people think, that makes us think people think they're better, that make us think things, period, against our brothers and our sisters. Father God, to make us say things, talk people's business, busy bodies, talking about things we don't even know the full story, bearing false witness, all of these things where we are just hurting ourselves. Father God, let these things be done away with. Take them away from us in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit come and bring us love, joy. Let it bring us peace, long suffering. Let it bring us goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, all of the fruits of the Spirit. Let them rest upon us right now. Come on, lift your hands high. Holy Spirit, give us the fruits of your Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, love, joy, Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Let it rest upon your people right now. So we'll be kind. We'll be good. We'll treat them good. We'll think good thoughts. We'll love. We'll care. We'll be concerned. We won't hate. We won't try to destroy. We won't be malicious. We cast that devil out right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, start it off right. Hug somebody and say, I love you. I love you because you're you. Come on, hug them. Say, I don't have nothing against you. I can't have nothing against you. Because I love you. We're a family in here. You're my sister. Love you, sis. Love you, bro. You're my family. You're my family. In many ways, you're better than my real family. God sent you to me so I would have family. So I could be loved the right way. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not going to be a cynic. I'm not going to speak negatively. Hallelujah. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Those are the things. Hallelujah. That I'm going to walk in from now on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Elder. 